We're gonna think about scaling things for a minute. Take a line segment, scale it up by two, and you get two copies of the same segment. If you take a square and scale it up by two, you get four copies of the original square inside the larger square. When you scale by a factor, the number of copies of the object is the scale factor to the dimension of your set. We'll make dimension a bit more formal in a minute, but the scaling property of sets is intimately related to our colloquial intuition for the dimension of a set or shape. So how do fractals scale? We're going to consider this one. It's called Sierpinski's Triangle, or the Inception Triforce as I've heard it called. It's an equilateral triangle, but then you remove the middle equilateral triangle, and then you do the exact same thing with the three equilateral triangles left over, and then repeat that with the triangles left over, and continue forever. And what you get when you're done with doing that infinitely many times, that's Sierpinski's triangle. When you scale this triangle by a factor of two, you get three copies of it. So what's its dimension? Mathematicians would be careful and specify what kind of dimension we were talking about, but it just so happens that this intuitive version of dimension falls in line with what is called the Hausdorff dimension of a set. However, the Hausdorff dimension of a set is a bit more general, and can be any number greater than or equal to zero, which is a bit mind-boggling. To start to understand this a bit more, let's look at a curve and call it C. If I were to just measure C with points, there would be infinitely many of them, which isn't super satisfying. And if we tried to measure it with another line, then we would have something akin to its length. However, if I tried again to measure it with anything higher dimensional than a line, like squares, I would have zero squares in my line. When we take the Hausdorff dimension of a set, we're essentially doing what we just did with the curve C, but on a larger scale. That is, we'd measure the set with objects of all possible dimensions, and then the one that works the best tells us the dimension of the set in question. Notice that was essentially what we did with the curve. We can graph the measure of the curve as a function of what dimension we are using to measure it. Anything lower dimensional than a line or a dimension less than one would be too small in a sense to measure the curve, so those measures are all infinity. But anything higher dimensional or dimension greater than one used to measure the curve would be too big in some sense. So those measures are all zero. This tells us that lines are the jump point, and therefore the curve is one dimensional. When we use lines, we get something akin to length, which is non-zero and not infinity either. Sets like this that have a jump point where this way of measurement is not zero or infinity are super nice, as they make the determination of dimension, which if we are being completely rigorous, can be very, very involved, a bit easier. We call these sets S sets, and they will be useful in about a minute. But that was a lot, so let's recap. Hausdorff dimension works exactly the way you want it to, and we saw this was the case for a curve. But we also said that the Hausdorff dimension does not need to have a whole number as its value. So what does a non-whole number dimensional set look like? There's no intuitive object that we can use to measure a set that has dimension 0.5 or some other non-integer number, but there are sets that do have such a dimension. And in fact, according to the Hausdorff dimension theorem, for every positive real number s, there are infinitely many sets that have that dimension s. Many of these sets are fractals, so let's go back to the only fractal we have gone over so far, Sierpinski's triangle. After removing triangle after triangle, it appears that there isn't much left on the inside of the original triangle. So what would you actually use to measure it, to determine its dimension? That would be pretty hard to come up with, so we're going to abstract the problem into a computation. Let's say that the correct object to measure this set with has dimension s. Sierpinski's triangle also has a property called self-similarity. That is, whenever you scale up the triangle, you get more detail in the triangle. So we should try arguing by talking about its properties of scaling. Consider these three smaller triangles in the Sierpinski's triangle. Notice that if I measure all three of them, I have actually measured the entire Sierpinski's triangle. So if I add together these measures, I get the measure of the whole thing. Next, notice that if I scale each of the smaller triangles up by a factor of two, I get the entire triangle. 
And like with the line and the box at the beginning, the measure of the scaling is given by the factor I scaled by to the dimension which we said is S here. So each of the measures of these three smaller triangles is one half to the S times the measure of the entire Sierpinski's triangle. In other words, we can get a smaller triangle by scaling the entire Sierpinski's triangle by half. Now we run into a little issue. If S is the jump value and the measure here is infinity or zero, then we can't divide by the measure's value. So we can't solve for S. However, we get really lucky. Although we won't prove it, Sierpinski's triangle is an S set, which we talked about briefly before. It just means that at the jump point that we're worried about for this set, we don't get infinity or zero when we measure it. The rest is just a little bit of algebra, and we find the dimension of Sierpinski's triangle is log three over log two, which is definitely not a whole number. Anyway, I know I said I wasn't gonna post a video this week, but it just ended up working out that I could post one, and I know it's late, but I'm giving myself a break on it being late because I still posted one this week, so. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you wanna see more videos like this, you can give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos each week. There's also a poll you can take, and that tells me kind of like what general subject area you guys want to hear about so it'd be really nice if you could fill that out too otherwise i am nathan this is chalk and i will see you next time